Hi, and welcome back to R for Burfus. I'm Jennifer, your instructor for this tutorial series. Last time we met, we imported our data file into R, looked at that data file, and then exported the data file back out of R. Today, we're going to spend some time on the CDC website, get more familiar with the Burfus variables, and then learn how to call columns from our data file into the R console. So, We'll start with the CDC website, um, but we're also going to be working in R, and our data file is large, so I want to give it time to load. So I'll just go ahead and set that up now. Set our Cranmere to the cloud, OK. File, change directory, desktop, R for Burfus, OK. We can uh, load our libraries, which we installed the packages for last time. So library parentheses Rio, and library, parentheses tidyverse, close parentheses. All right, um, and last time we called in our, our data file, we set the object as LLCP 2017, assignment arrow, assignment arrow. We use the import function from Rio, import parentheses quote LLCP 2017.xpt was our data file. So now, now that we have our data file that we exported out of R as a CSV file, we don't actually need to rely on the Rio import function anymore. We can just use the base R function called read.csv. So that's read.csv, parentheses, quote, the name of our CSV file is llcp2017.csv, end quote. End quote. And then um, when you are using the read.csv function, you have to tell R um, if, so in our case, our CSV file has a header, right? So all of the column names are lined up on the top row. So we have to tell R that we have a header. So header equals true. And we'll let that run. So now let's go to the CDC website. CDC Burfus 2017, Survey Data and Documentation. We're going to be in uh, two PDF files today. The first is the Burfus Overview. The second is the Burfus Codebook. So I just want to revisit the Burfus Overview so that we can, let me make that bigger. Oh, that's very large, okay so that we can reiterate everything that we already know about Burfus. So, uh, Burfus's objective is to collect uniform state-specific data on health risk behaviors, chronic diseases and conditions, access to healthcare, and use of preventive health services related to the leading, leading causes of death and disability in the United States. Okay, so if you read further into the background, you'll see that this data is collected nationally every year, and it asks really important questions. And as we know, we have 450,000 respondents from 2017 alone. So this is a really comprehensive, important public health data set. And the survey is written as a questionnaire that has three question types. So the first are the core component. These are the questions that um, all states use. They're standardized, written by Burfus, and required, basically. The CDC requires that the states uh, participating in the Burfus survey ask these questions. The next are the optional Burfus modules. These are ones that the CDC writes, but the states can decide whether they want to or don't want to ask these questions to their respondents. And then finally, some states may have specific questions that they're interested in. So the CDC allows for states to write their own questions as well. So our codebook. This document is really important for us because it basically outlines how Burfus interacts with, understands, um, and interprets all of the responses that, are, that, that people answer to this survey. So, for example, the first question on the survey is about what state the respondent comes from. You can see their 
the states are listed here, right? So people can come from any of these states. But in the BRFIS data file, um, that, that state is coded as a number, which is this value. And something important that uh, I want to get across to you is that this is a number, but it's not a number that we do math on, right? Like you wouldn't take the average of all of the state values of all, all of these numbers. You wouldn't subtract these numbers. You wouldn't divide them or take the standard deviation. You wouldn't do arithmetic on these numbers because these numbers represent categor categorical response options. So they're actually factors. So you would do something like take the frequency, for example. We're, we're going to be taking frequencies, um, chi-square tests, but not arithmetic. And that's important because a lot of BRFIS questions are written in this way and coded as numbers. So the data file thinks it's full of numbers, but it's actually full of factors. For example, um, so actually the, the first 16 pages of the codebook are questions related to the interview and the interviewee. But the first question about health is called Gen Health, and it's written as, would you say that in general your health is excellent, very good, good, fair, poor, don't know, not sure, refused, or not asked, or missing? So most of the questions in BRFIS are set up like this, where the value label corresponds to a value. And also for most questions, 7 and 9 um, correlates to don't know, not sure, and refused. And then of course, Blake, blank, Cells are not asked or missing. So most of the questions in BRFIS are in this format. But there are some questions in BRFIS that um, produce real numbers that you can do math on. For example, height. So self-reported height. In this, um, in this question, you can see uh, about how tall are you without shoes. The first row of this value table is height in feet and inches. So the format's a little weird, so the range is 700, uh, 200 to 711, uh, where 200 actually means 2 feet 0 inches, and 711 means 7 feet 11 inches. So after you, you know, reformat these numbers, you can do math on them. But the second row in this value table, 7777, means don't know, not short. You can't do math on that. The next row um, is height in meters. And they add a nine in the thousands place to distinguish between height in feet and height in inches. So to do math on these values, you first have to subtract 9,000 and then um, reformat it to look like height in meters and centimeters. And then again, 9999 is refused. It's not a number you can do math on. All right, so this survey obviously is very long. We know that there are 358 questions. Um, most of them are, are written with categorical response answers. So the numbers uh, correlate to factors, not numbers, even though in the data table, it looks like numbers. So I have our data table open from last time. And I'm just going to scroll through so you can look at it quickly. But it's, it's all numbers. And R thinks it's numbers too. So we're going to explore that a little bit. Great, so our, our data file read incorrectly. Um, if you remember from last time, we can call in our column names by typing call names, call names, LLCP 2017. Or if you don't want to do call, call names, you can just do names. I like call names because it reminds me that I'm asking for the column names. Um, nonetheless, here are our column names. And as you know, if we want to display our entire data file, we just type in our object LLCP 2017, and that will display the whole data table. But let's say we just want to look at one column from the data table. So we can type in our data file LLCP 2017, then type a dollar sign, and let's look at the Gen Health column. So Gen Health. 
So now we have all of the responses for that general health column. And as we had the same issue with reading in the whole data table, um, this is not very informative, right? It's just a bunch of numbers, and it doesn't even give us every single response. I'm, I'm just going to scroll all the way to the bottom, and you see how many entries were omitted. 350,000 entries were omitted. So this is not that informative. Um, but calling in the column is, it is informative in a way because it gives you insight into the character class. So if this, if this um, variable were a factor, we would see something at the bottom which says levels one, two, three, four, seven, nine, I think. Those were the response options on this general health question. So what we can do is ask for the class of the LLCP 2017 dollar sign gen health question. So the class of this variable is integer. So when R reads in our data file and looks at this column, the variable for general health, it believes it's an integer. So, you know, it believes it's a number that you would do math on, which is not what we want, right? We want R to recognize it as a factor. So what we do instead is we type as dot factor. So we want R to recognize it as a factor. LLCP um, 2017 dollar sign gen health. And what we should do also is tell R not just to read it uh, as a factor or understand it as a factor on this line of code, but actually to go back into the data table, back to that column, and remember that it's a factor from there. So what we do is we set an object again, LLCP 2017 dollar sign gen health assignment arrow as dot factor. So what this does is tells R that the next time you look at LLCP 2017 dollar sign gen health, which is the gen health column in our data file, remember that's, that it's a factor. So now I'm going to press enter and it re hopefully remembered. So let's check on it. LLCP 2017 dollar sign gen health. And you see here we have the levels. So let's just verify the class of LLCP 2017 dollar sign gen health. And now it knows that it's a factor. So that's really important, right? Because as we're working with this survey data more in the future, we'll be wanting to view these survey responses as they actually are as factors and not as numbers. So, <clears throat> Let's check what else we are going to do for today. I feel like I covered a lot. All right, so there are a couple of additional ways to call a column into your R console. So what we've done is um, type the name of the data frame or the data file, dollar sign, and then the name of the variable. But what you can also do is type your uh, data frame or data file, LLCP 2017, and you can do bracket. And within these brackets, um, the first space, which now I'm just going to put a placeholder of zero, which I'll delete later. The first place is row, then you put a comma, space, the second place. The second place is a column. So when you do this bracket, you do number, comma, number, that's the row and the column. So let's just look at a column though. Let's delete the row. So if you delete the row, it will give you the whole column and not just the row and the column. So if you specify a row and a column, it will give you only that single observation, which would be one cell in your Excel file, for example. So let's look at the, the first column, which is our state column. So the, oops, the first column. So LLCP 2017 bracket comma one bracket. And this is our state, our state column. So just remember 12, 13, 
15, 12, 13, 15. Okay, so let's say we don't know the number of the column, but we know the name of the column. So we can do LLCP 2017 bracket no row, we're not specifying the row, so comma, quote mark, x underscore state, end quote mark, end bracket. And we get the same thing. All of this 12, 13, 15. So that worked as well. Right, so let's review. So far, we've, where is my mouse at? Okay, here we go. So, so far we've looked at LLCP 2017 bracket comma, the name of the variable in quote marks end, bra end bracket. We've looked at LLCP 2017 bracket comma, the number of the column end bracket. We've looked at, ignore this, ignore this class. We've looked at, um, yeah, LLCP 2017 dollar sign, the name of the variable. What you can also do is LLCP 2017. If you do a double bracket, double bracket, you don't have to specify the row. You can just call the column automatically. So let's start with the number of the column for the state column. So double bracket, one double bracket. And we get the same thing again. All right, scrolling, we see 12, 13, and 15. Finally, if you don't know the number of the column, but you want to use this double bracket, instead of one, you can type in, in quotes, the name of your variable. And finally, we see the same thing again. 12, 13, 15. Okay, so uh, now you know how to call columns into your R console. You know how to check the class of that R column. So for example, if we want to use this last option of LLCP 2017, double bracket, quote, name of the variable, quote, double bracket, we can check the class on that, class, parentheses, wrap it in parentheses, and it tells me it's an integer. So if I want to set that variable as a factor, remember we, we, uh, we, we call in that column, then we set the assignment arrow, and we call the column as dot factor, parentheses, LLCP 2017, bracket, bracket, X underscore state, quote, double bracket. Oh, I forgot to close the parentheses. Close the parentheses. So now when we call in um, LLCP 2017 again, the class of that, it will remember that it's a factor. Okay, so... Yeah, just try to get familiar with um, exploring the codebook, understanding what the variables are read into in R as whether they're read in as a number, an integer, or a factor. Um, remember how to call out the columns. Remember how to change the variables slash columns into a factor if it's an integer, or conversely, if you want it to be an integer or a number. Just as we did as.factor, you can do as.numeric and I'm not entirely sure if you can call as.integer, but I'll double check on that for you as well. All right, so that more or less wraps up what I wanted to accomplish in today's tutorial. So thank you for watching chapter three of R for Burfus. Um, next time, we're going to subset our data frame. So we'll call in our huge data file and look at just one state and um, kind of start to write some hypotheses about why we're interested in this state, what demographic group are we looking at, what health outcomes are we going to look at, and we'll also, um, any, any optional modules that that state didn't complete, we'll also drop those columns from our data file so that we only have um, the columns and the variables that we're interested in working with. So I will close out my R session and not save the workspace. Don't need this PowerPoint anymore, or the data files, or the internets. And um, I'll see you next time. So thank you. Bye.